Welcome back DP Review TV viewers. It's Jordan here to talk about the Canon R5. Now I know a lot of you are still waiting for delivery on your cameras, but in the meantime, Canon has already issued its first much needed firmware fix. Now there's a bunch of little bug fixes. If you jump on dpreview.com, you can see a full list of that, some tweaks to the stabilizer, some language issues, all kinds of stuff. What they didn't talk about it though is improvements to the overheating. However, there have been some real improvements made. We're gonna talk about those today. Okay, now there is a ton of talk online about what might be causing some of the overheating issues and potential workarounds. We're not gonna get into that today. We are just going to talk about the results you'll get if you install this new firmware on a production Canon R5. So let's take a look at some of the timings and the more demanding modes. So how I did these tests, I grabbed two cameras, a production R5 with the 1.0 firmware and a production R5 with the new 1.1 firmware, stuck them side by side on my trademarked Mamaru device that keeps the autofocus working and the image stabilizer while it's recording video. Doesn't look like that's a major concern with the overheating, but we wanna keep things fair in this. And using the older 1.0 firmware, that camera got an overheat warning at 16 minutes and 45 seconds but then conked out at 19 minutes and 41 seconds. However, the 1.1 firmware actually lasted longer than that before it even got an overheat warning. So with the version 1.1 firmware shooting 8K, we got 20 minutes and 21 seconds before the overheat warning came up and it actually went until 24 minutes and 53 seconds before the camera shut down completely. So once that happened, I turned both of those cameras off and gave them some rest time. And after a half an hour, I only had five minutes of record time available on the old 1.0 firmware, but I actually had 10 minutes record time in the 1.1. After a full hour, I had 10 minutes record time available on the 1.0 firmware and 15 minutes on the 1.1. So it's not a dramatic improvement, but it is certainly better. Now, I do think the 8K is a very niche format. I can't see a lot of people using that as their main recording format, but the 4K HQ is absolutely beautiful, and that's how I would use the R5. So let's see how that handles the overheating. Now, using the 1.0 firmware, I was able to record for 26 minutes and 12 seconds before the overheat warning kicked in, and it went all the way to 29 minutes and 52 seconds before the camera shut off completely. However, it was a lot better with the 1.1 firmware. Well, it was able to record until 32 minutes and 13 seconds before we got the overheat warning, and it actually went to, for 39 minutes and 10 seconds before it shut down, which is honestly pretty usable. But my main issue with these cameras is how long it takes to actually cool down. So again, waiting for an hour, the version 1.0 firmware said that it had 15 minutes available, where the version 1.1 had 20 minutes available. Not a huge improvement and definitely you will still run into regular overheating issues. It takes a long time to cool these things down. So with those first two tests, it's not a real practical real world example because I gave it three hours between every test for them to cool down. So I wanted to kind of have an idea how this thing is gonna function for a real hybrid photo shooter. When you go out, take a few pictures and you wanna switch over to video mode, a lot of the time you'll find you have very little runtime remaining. So the next test I did is I had the camera shoot two pictures every minute for a half an hour and an hour and then check how much 4K HQ record time we'd have available. So with the original 1.0 firmware, after a half an hour of shooting photos, I had 15 minutes of 4K HQ remaining. Then after an hour of it shooting interval photos, it said I only had five minutes of 4K HQ available, which is a fifth of what you start with if you're coming from a completely cool camera. Now moving over to the 1.1 firmware, there after a half hour, I had 20 minutes of 4K HQ available. After an hour of shooting, I had 10 minutes. So double the length, but it's still a huge hit in your record time. So it is really nice to see that Canon is already bringing out firmware to work on the glaring issue of the R5, which is that overheating problem. And I hope we see this brought over to the R6 so it's a little bit better before that camera hits market as well. And I gotta say, it does help certainly having a little longer record time, a little quicker cool off. I would say I'm 33% less stressed out shooting this on an R5 with the 1.1 firmware like we are right now. It does leave me with a couple major questions though. First of all, why are Canon being so secretive and not mentioning these overheating improvements in the documentation for the new firmware? And why do these overheating issues exist in the first place? Let's be honest, I think we're gonna be hearing about R5 overheating for quite a while in the future. If you're curious about that, you're definitely gonna to wanna to subscribe to the channel, check out all the latest news and the full R5 review coming up very soon on dpreview.com. Don't forget, subscribe, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, do all that social media stuff, and we will see you all again very soon on DP Review TV.